this is Magnar and welcome back to my modding tutorial series for Rome 2 Total War. In this episode I'm going to go through how uh, naval units work. And not, not everything to do with them, but uh, just essentially getting them, uh, creating a new naval unit uh, and getting it in game. So to start off let's jump into the data underscore Rome 2 pack, which can be found in your Rome 2 data folder right there and then we're going to go to naval units table now looking at the naval units table what we have here is actually just the ships themselves there are no units on these ships these are just the ship models uh, assigned um, with descriptions and movement points, all that kind of stuff, uh, but no actual men on the ships. So there's two parts to making uh, dealing with naval units. One part is the model creation. Uh, as you can see in PFM, the model navels table is actually red, which means we can't read it. And the reason that is is because we can't decode uh, some of the columns. In the assembly kit we can open that and see what it looks like but if we make any changes in this table uh, we can't load it as a mod uh, it, it just causes a crash so at the moment as far as I'm aware we can't actually change the mo naval models or create new ones or put existing parts together to create a new ship all we can do is uh, assign the ships that we are, which are already there and of course change which units are going to be on them uh, and their stats and all that kind of stuff so getting back to that if we go to back to naval units we can see here is the key this key will be assigned uh, to units in main units um, I'll look in main units now just to show you exactly where <coughs> see here naval unit the land unit name comes in this column and here is a true false a boolean uh, variable a tick box if you will which determines whether this is a naval only unit or it is a land unit which can then of course go on to transports you can see here the ballist african ballista uses an egyptian small transport uh, African elephants use an Egyptian small transport. The larger units use the Egyptian normal transport for Africa. And different, you can go down to the auxiliary and you can see they're using Roman transports. And the tick here is off. The tick means that it's only a naval unit. And in the key with the vanilla naval units, it usually has the size of the ship that the unit is on. So here we have an Ethiopian sword unit, uh, and this, the size of the ship is six. Uh, you might be familiar with the word trireme or bireme. Trireme being, would equate to a three, bireme a two, um, and that's what those n numbers are, or the spelling of those numbers. See over here, Egyptian six. So these, this is where the um, the model and all the stats associated with that model including how much ramming damage it does and all that kind of stuff comes into it you can also set here um, how many ships a unit will have uh, up to that is <clears throat> it still has to have at least 20 men so if you have um, if you ch we change this the maximum per men per ship to 80 and the, the unit has 160 men in it then and we change the number of ships to two then there'll be two transport ships for the one unit if that if we do the same thing turn that to 80 turn that to two but there are only uh, 90 men alive in the unit because the minimum number of men per ship is 20 only one ship will appear and the other 10 will yeah, not be worried about So that's really all we have to do in the main units. So you want, once you want, if you want to ch put 
create a new naval unit per se. Say you want to put uh, Praetorian Guards onto a ship. You would just get the code for the Praetorian unit. Or you can, let's have a look here, Rome. Which Rome unit can we find first? There you go, Rome Praetorian Guard. You can just copy, clone that row, tick the box, and then pick a different ship here. So whether it be a Roman 4, Roman 6, depending on how big you want that ship to be, you can just change it like that. Um, okay, so getting back to the actual ships and the actual ship stats, because the unit stats we've covered in previous episodes and dealing with lots of uh, stuff to do with the units, but with the actual ships we haven't touched on yet. So the ships, we have the key, campaign movement points, uh, the category will be will come into effect with uh, ramming types there's a there's a table called naval uh, it ramming events no. yeah naval ramming events so if we look in there you can see here the uh, the category heavy light um, Sorry, this is a the event, and then here it compares how much ramming damage is done by a medium, uh, sorry, by a um, heavy ship to a medium ship, how much ramming damage is done by a light ship to a heavy ship, etc., etc., and, and you can vary all those. You can create new ones of these, and um, in, in Magna Mod, I actually created a uh, transport ship group, and then created, you know. Uh, transport to heavy, transport to light, transport to medium, um, all those kind of ramming events. And you could do the similar kind of stuff or make a whole wider range of these, whatever you feel like doing. Going into the naval fire junction, this determines, <coughs> of well it's pretty obvious I think, how easy it is for each category of ship to, to catch on fire. So you got your fire arrows um, that some archers can shoot, and I think in vanilla they have some ridiculous flaming javelins. Uh, then there's also uh, projectiles like from artillery that can be on fire, and so depending on your in this what you your, your values in this table will determine how easily and quickly that will occur. The naval effects is just uh, a visual effects type of thing. Um, I haven't really played around with that much, so I'm not going to. I'm not really an authority on what to do there. Uh, just like land units have, land, we have that land units, um, land units to unit abilities table. Naval units also have the same thing. Um, and here you can see this is just like how fast they can row. Uh, as with our special abilities uh, episode, you can create new abilities for the ships. If you want to learn how to do that, check out that episode. The naval weapons table uh, takes the values from the naval weapons enums table. So here you go. And it's got some a few different types of naval weapons you can use. Now all these are assigned, uh, like I said, in the naval units table. They're all assigned to it. Um, whether it be via the category, through ramming events or uh, fire junctions, or through uh, weapon type, primary weapon, say so naval weapon here. So this will pull from the naval weapons table. Same with this one here. The rank death is pretty much one because uh, usually it's only one ship. But if you want to have, if you want to have a unit which uses 50 ships, yeah you can do that. Um, the can board tick box here doesn't actually do anything. You cannot disable boarding uh, whether it be through this or through uh, the attributes. I've tried it, none of them actually work. It's just there to lull you into a false sense of hope. The ignition, ignition threshold here is uh, just follows on from the fire junctions table. 
Um, strengths and weaknesses, this is just pretty much text. Uh, if you want to change that, you have to go into the localization folder files. And uh, Same with the short description text. Just like we did in the uh, land units, short description text, you have to have it in unit or is it unit description short text uh, this this will come from and the strengths and weaknesses uh, will come from this table here so if, before you put it into the localization uh, files which we covered in uh, the episode on unit texts before you you'll need to have entries in here which this will then pull through to. So you can see here all the different strength and weakness te texts you can use. The other part to uh, naval units uh, which has a whole bunch of more stat stats which you'll want to play around with if you want to do some kind of naval overhaul is in the battle entities table. So if we go to the battle entities table <coughs> And we'll get rid of. We'll just focus on the ship stuff. Right, use the filter. You can see each of those ship types has an entry also in the battle entities table. And here it determines uh, the speed, acceleration, deceleration, turn speed, uh, ramming speed, which is charge speed. How far away before it starts? Ramming uh, starts the ramming. Uh, animation where it start, pick starts using charge speed instead of run speed. Uh, radius is kind of like the uh, area around it which it which kind of sits in. Uh, different masses. Masses comes into effect with uh, the damage values we use for ramming are just base damages. There's also there'll also probably be other added damages for depending on heavy ships hitting lighter ships based on the mass um, and it also determines just like with with uh, infantry when t a heavy unit hits like a cavalry unit because it's heavier hits an infantry unit the infantry unit kind of gets flung back the same mass uh, works also for ships if you have a a ship with a mass of one versus a ship with a mass of 116,000, then the one ship will uh, not be able to hold its ground. The fire arc determines uh, in how in what kind of range can a unit fire. So you can see here, if, if for instance in Magna Mod, I've given um, transport ships zero fire arc, so that. Uh, <coughs> any missile units like archers and such when they're on transport are pretty much useless they can't actually shoot um, they can only ram so that's some kind of stuff you can do with the fire arc data here uh, turn speed the higher the number the faster the turn and you can uh, vary that between heavy and uh, light ships if you like hit points again uh, base hit points determines if it, the ship gets sunk after a certain number of damage done that's pretty obvious, I think. Uh, minimum turn speed, yeah, you might want to not make that zero because otherwise, when a ship's stationary, it might not. Uh... Anyway, there's a lot, you, can, you can play around with all those. <coughs> there's a lot to you can do there with the the ships and their stats to um, create a little naval overhaul, if you will. <laughs> and that's uh, pretty much the basic stuff you need to know for dealing with naval units. Um, so thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.